All right. We'd like to thank all of you for being here this morning, and uh, we hope you'll find this interesting and useful. What we're going to talk about today is the importance of effective utility expense management. I'm Kevin Whitaker, Director of Utility Expense Management at Wise Meter Solutions. And we also have Vince Brescia, who needs no introduction. He's our president at Wise Meter. And uh, we're going to put this presentation in a couple of parts. First, we're going to start out with if this presentation will apply to you and uh, some information on why it's important to uh, effectively manage your utility expense management dealing with commodity prices and other issues. So Vince is going to go ahead and get started, and then uh, I'll be back up here in a few minutes. Thanks, Kevin. So, <clears throat> so as Kevin mentioned, we're going to talk about uh, whether this, this presentation applies to you, uh, some options uh, in pursuing utility expense management, uh, the kinds of things you can uh, consider doing in uh, managing your utility costs, uh, the kinds of, of, of tools that are available uh, we're going we're gonna to cover off uh, a few of those that are available out there in the marketplace and uh, discuss whether the Leafs can improve their record by using a utility expense management. they <laughs> tried everything else. Uh, so um, just to give you a teaser, I think uh, what I'm going to talk about before Kevin walks you through sort of the nuts and, and bolts of the key elements of utility expense management is give you a sense of why this is becoming more and more of an important uh, issue. And uh, the, your utility costs, you can plan for um, your key utility costs to rise significantly over the next little while. So if we look at just at the electricity sector uh, for a little bit, there's some major uh, investments that the province is going to be making in the electricity system that are going to have to go into rates. So there's the, the Bruce Power refurbishment is, you know, you're looking at 20 million, 20 billion dollars there. Got another $11 billion for Darlington that needs to be done. They're both core elements of electricity supply in Ontario. We need those projects. Those have to be paid for. The Niagara Tunnel project hasn't been fully put into rates. That's already completed where they built a large tunnel to allow them to make better use of Niagara Falls for uh, electricity generation. Uh, the gas plants cancellation, that has to go in. There's also the, you know, this recent announcement of uh, an attempt to take uh, billions of dollars out of the hydro system to pay for transit through investment. At some point, that has to be paid for. The investors who put their money in need a return. So that will add pressure uh, to rates. You add in the other factors that are, that are going on within the electricity system, with attempts at uh, creating clean energy, uh, the upcoming removal of the clean energy benefit, which has been announced for January 1, uh, 2016. You put all these things together, you're going to have significant rate increases in electricity for the foreseeable future. Uh, insiders in the electricity system suggest that you should be budgeting for about 10% a year electricity increases, at least till 2020. And uh, just last week, the province uh, had announced the most recent increase, which was uh, 7% on a six-month basis, so that's an annualized increase of about 14%. And we know with the clean energy benefit coming off in, in January 1, 2015, at the same time that the debt retirement charge is eliminated, that's another 7% without any additional rate increases related to these things that I'm talking about. So there's lots of uh, price increases coming in electricity that you should be planning for. On the water side, we have a very similar uh, story. Uh, Toronto has plans for major investments in its water infrastructure, and it's going to need to recover uh, those costs. It's going on across the country. Uh, Vancouver's announced uh, major increases uh, in its water costs. Halifax uh, is also making plans. You look at municipalities across the country. What is happening is that they're moving to full cost pricing for uh, water, which didn't used to happen. Essentially, water used to be subsidized out of the property tax uh, base, so it wasn't. We are never really charged the full cost of water. You may think, you know, here in Ontario, we're surrounded by water; it should be cheap. Water is expensive, even if it's plentiful around you. You have to build a, a treatment plant before it gets to your home. You have to build a huge infrastructure to deliver it, deliver it with pressure all around the municipality, and then you have to treat it on the way back out. And all of that is very expensive. 
So here's uh, what Toronto's uh, rate increases have been since uh, 2008. So they've averaged about 9% a year, and it's been very steady. And you should be budgeting for that to continue for the next while. And we've seen a very similar story in other municipalities. Here's some of the rate increases that were announced for 2015, this year, for some GTA municipalities, because I suspect most of you are, are, are from the GTA or Ontario area. So you can see we're, you're ranging between 5 and 10% for annualized increase. So, so your utility costs are going up much greater than inflation, particularly in water and electricity. Uh, natural gas, we haven't talked about. It's a very volatile commodity. So given its volatility and, and you as, a, as an owner or a manager of a property looking for certainty, it's another area where anything you can do to uh, manage the volatility on that side and deal with your costs is going to benefit you in the long run. So that's just framing the discussion for why it's going to become more and more important that you get more strategic about uh, managing uh, utilities. And I think I'm going to hand it off to Kevin here who's going to talk about some of the ways you can uh, do that. Kevin? All right. Thank you, Vince. So really appreciate Vince coming up here and giving us the, uh, the bright future of utility costs. So. Why bother with managing your utility expenses or uh, finding a utility expense manager to do that for you? Well, the biggest reason is the cost, right? You want to improve your competitive edge. You don't want your business to go broke. Very, uh, very straightforward reasons as far as that goes. Another byproduct of managing your utilities more responsibly, more effectively, is it's environmentally responsible, which we'll touch on in a little bit more detail here in a minute. Uh, a third reason is it allows uh, for property owners, for condo boards, for uh, property managers to focus on your core competencies. So here we have a slide that we've, we've anonymized, but it's basically a process for how many property owners and property managers have to deal with their bulk utility expense. And uh, you may notice there's a lot going on. So we have three, three buildings here, and at each of these buildings, they have their various utilities, hydroelectric, gas, water, and those utilities all send bulk bills. Uh, sometimes the utilities uh, direct meter some of the individual suites, and so in those cases, there's even more bills that are going uh, from the utility to the owner or the management teams, uh, typically to the accounting team. And once the accounting team receives those bills, they have to manually data enter all that information into the accounting system. Uh, if your team is a little bit more sophisticated and you're using some energy software, somebody's keying that data into your energy software. And from all this data that gets keyed in, those bills still need to be paid. So your accounting team is cutting individual checks for bills that go to the, uh, the hydro provider, the gas provider, the water provider. And this is across, if, if you're a, an owner with multiple buildings, you have these bills coming across uh, your entire portfolio. And so on any given day, you may have any number of bills that's going to be kind of hard to plan for when they're going to come and how your accounting team is going to split their time. And so what uh, we're going to suggest here is if you're using a utility expense manager, especially on bulk bill payment and uh, processing, then that really allows your accounting team, your management team, to focus on their core, competence, core competencies uh, for your buildings in your portfolio. A uh, final reason for uh, managing utility expenses is that it allows your teams to create data-driven strategies. And we'll talk a little bit more about the different tools that are provided that help uh, give decision makers the data to make those decisions here in just a second. So the bottom line here for why, why do we need to manage our utility expenses is it's going to save money. Uh, utility and commodity prices are only increasing. And this is a real thing. Uh, we know that Hydro One is going to be sold off. There's speculation. What's that going to do for utility expenses? Uh, there is announced price increases on some utilities that start uh, as soon as uh, tomorrow, actually, I think May 1st. And uh, so this is something that, you know, it hits home and it hits home right now. So we're going to save money. Uh, utility expense managers are going to be able to save you time. 
and it's uh, it's good for the environment as a as a byproduct. And we know that the environment's becoming something that's more and more uh, in the picture when we talk about utilities and energy. So let's move in a little bit to talk about what kinds of things determine your utility expenses. So this presentation is mostly geared toward uh, property managers, property owners, uh, condo boards. But if, uh, if you own a home, if you're just here because you're interested, you know, some of these things will also apply to you. But let's, uh, let's look at this word cloud. I saw this, and I know that for a presentation, it's kind of confusing. And I thought, you know, that's perfect. A lot of the property managers and property owners that we talk to, when they understand utility rates are going up, Hydro One might be sold, oh my gosh, like what is that going to mean? And they really want to get their arms around utility expense and uh, manage those. And when they go and they look at what kinds of things are going to affect it that they might have control over, this is what they feel like. There are tons of different things, right? Uh, so billionaires is a big one. I'm also conscious that there are uh, utility representatives from utility companies in the crowd. And as a, a member of a submetering company, I sympathize that it's, it's difficult to have software that bills utilities correctly. And part of the reason for that is various rate schedules, various customers. Uh, it's a highly, highly regulated industry. So for uh, industrial companies, Customers, they may be on one rate schedule. For residential customers, they may be on another. There's commercial rate schedules. And then for different utilities, if you're in gas, if you're in electric, uh, those have their own uh, specific regulations. So there is, there's a lot going on in uh, what can go wrong on your bill. And utility expense managers specialize in you know, looking at your bulk bill, uh, helping to deal with uh, providers and they also have experience in the challenges that providers face in getting the bills out. And so there's room for them to help negotiate on your part and figure out, okay, how can we come to what the best rate schedule is for a property owner? Uh, how can we come to what the most reasonable uh, credit would be for a bill that was issued with an error on it? Those are things that utility expense managers can help you with. Other things that determine your utility expenses that an owner or property manager may have some influence on would be things like window quality, insulation quality, uh, landscaping. These are all items that are up here. I'm sure we can think of many others. I also wanted to point out, uh, it's not large, but types of tenants makes a huge difference in your utility expense. Uh, we're probably all familiar with the, uh, the tenants that it's summer, and it's warm out and they have the AC running on high and yet for some reason their windows are open or the door to their balcony is open. And uh, in those cases, they just, they don't think about, you know, what's the expense for this gonna cost? But if you're a property manager or an owner, you're on the condo board, you're very aware of what kind of costs that's going to incur. So this brings us to a bit of a fork in the road. And uh, I want to preface a little bit and say that we have, we have these two options and both of these options have, uh, have very good arguments for them and both of these options apply in, in different situations. Uh, so option one would be what I like to call the measurement, reporting, and uh, recovery option, which includes submetering, bulk bill management, utility reporting. Option two would be things like engineering audits and infrastructure upgrades, more of the hardware route. And as I said, uh, depending on your situation, both of these options can really benefit a property manager or an owner. For this presentation, though, we're going to focus primarily on option one. And there are a few reasons for that. Uh, a major reason is that here in Canada, the market is such that uh, many of these items from option one don't cost a property owner or property manager anything up front. Uh, Submetering, for example, most submetering companies will pay uh, the cop capital costs for installing the submeters and getting that going for you. Uh, so not only is that something you could do, I you don't know, talk to a submetering company tomorrow and they, trust me, they're eager for your business, they'll get to installing uh, very quickly and you start seeing the recovery very, very quickly. Um, so it's, it's really... Uh, one of the best cost-benefit scenarios as far as what you can do, you can do it immediately. Uh, it costs pretty much nothing and it really offsets. If you can imagine uh, all of the utilities that tenants are consuming, 
And if they're paying for that themselves, uh, then you're finding, OK, not only is your utility expense much more manageable, but you're going to have a lot of happy tenants. Typically, we find that there are a few tenants in any building who are really over-consuming. They're the ones with the AC on and the, win and the window or the door open. And most tenants are going to find when they're paying for only what they use that they're no longer subsidizing those over-consumers. And so they're going to be a lot happier. Uh, it makes for a more stable environment as far as condo uh, common fees or rent increases, those kinds of things if you're not having to front all the costs for utilities. Because what we know is that even for buildings that are not submetered, somebody's still paying for those utilities and it's probably in uh, a renter's rent or it's in the HOAs uh, or in the common, the common area fees. So uh, let's talk a little about submetering and just in case uh, anybody happened to wander in and they're curious and they don't really know what submetering is, I suppose I should unpack that a little bit. So most uh, large buildings, typically residential buildings uh, in these cases, have one single meter from the local utility, whether it's an electric meter or a water meter or a gas meter. And uh, so individual units are not, uh, are not metered by the local utility and are not paying for what they're using. It's all in one. So what submetering is, is uh, there are companies that come in and they go on the building side behind the utilities meter and they can measure essentially what each individual unit is using. So types of utilities that can be submetered, uh, we've talked a little bit about, I've already mentioned water, gas, uh, electric. There's also submeters now for um, different ways of measuring heat, thermo, uh, thermal measuring. And really, it depends on the type of building. And so that's not something we're going to get too detailed into. But we do want to point out that there is a distinction between new construction and existing buildings when it comes to submetering, typically. So for electric, electric can be uh, electric submeters can be installed pretty much anywhere, whether it's an existing building or a new construction. That's pretty straightforward. When it comes to gas and water, however, uh, new constructions, it's no problem if you bring your uh, submetering provider in early in that process. It's very easy to plan, okay, where are all these going to go? How do we get them installed? And that's a very straightforward process. If you have existing buildings and you want to do submetering for water or gas, then it really depends on uh, the construction, the structure of your building, its age. There are a number of factors that uh, if that's something you're interested in, I'd recommend having a submetering company go out and take a look. Uh, so it really depends. Sometimes it's possible. Sometimes it's, it's very difficult. Uh, all right. So that covers uh, submetering as probably one of the single best tools to help uh, property managers and owners control their expenses. I should mention we've been talking mostly about uh, residential condo type applications. Uh, I've also seen submetering used uh, with very great effect in commercial environments. So something like a mall, uh, you can think of the type of energy that a mall would use and for property managers and owners for malls. Uh, it's really nice to be able to offset that if you're uh, submetering H&M or uh, Forever 21, you know, not to say where I shop or anything, no. Uh, but there, there's a lot of savings there. Uh, so submetering is one side where, as an owner or property manager, you're able to recover some of that cost from, from your tenants, and it also helps your tenants only pay for what they use. The other side of that is the bulk bills that utilities are sending you. And so what, even if you're submetered, there's still that bulk meter on your building, and you're still going to get a bill from it, and there's still going to be things, whether it's a parking garage or uh, lighting, hallways, uh, pool, if you have that that are probably going to uh, still it may end up, you're still going to pay for it, right? So what does bulk bill management entail? So there's a number of ways that uh, different utility expense managers can look at your, your bulk bills and can things they can do with your bulk bills. Uh, generally, big picture bulk bill management would be a uh, utility expense manager would have the bulk bills sent directly to them, and that would allow them to uh, scan all of the information to make the bills available online in one portal. So if you remember the slide with the, the three buildings and, you know, potentially nine different utilities, 
Uh, instead of an accounting team having to go to nine different utility websites or the file cabinet, they just go to one website, there's all the bills. So the bills all get sent to the utility expense manager. There they process all the bills, put all the data in their system. Uh, sometimes they audit the bills depending on uh, who you're with and we'll, we'll talk that, uh, speak to auditing here in a minute. And then often they can pay the bills and advantages to that uh, we'll speak in a little bit more detail, but uh, the short answer is it's a lot easier for your accounting team to pay one vendor rather than nine vendors or 20 vendors across Canada, depending on the size of your portfolio. All right. Uh, oh, forgot to mention for submetering, we do have some data on uh, the energy savings and the carbon savings that's associated with, with submetering. And this is just some data that, that we looked at in our portfolio and, and out across uh, Ontario, and we estimated there's still about 750,000 uh, rental residential submetered or units in Ontario that still need to be submetered. And if all of them were, you know, you can see the type of carbon savings that uh, that would contribute to helping the environment. Uh, also, I mentioned a little bit about how um, bill payers, uh, typically if they're measuring their, if, if their bills, if their consumption is being measured, uh, they're going to use less. They're going to close that door when they're using the AC, those kinds of things. You can see uh, some real data on the difference between a non-bill payer and a, and a uh, bill payer. So uh, this is related to the submetering, and you can... Uh, you can get a sense of how much of an impact that can make. All right, uh, so let's return to, to the bulk bill processing. Sorry for the little interlude there. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how bulk bill processing can eliminate the various internal costs. As we've gone over what the big picture of bulk bill processing is. Let's talk about internal costs that can be eliminated. So this is a slide you'll notice that there's some similarity to the previous uh, diagram we looked at where there's three different buildings for a portfolio and the different uh, utilities for each of those buildings sending bills. This is a slide for how that process can look if you're using a utility expense manager. In these cases, it doesn't matter uh, how many buildings you have or how many uh, different local utilities are servicing your buildings, what municipalities you're in, uh, it's very easy to scale. All of those bulk bills all go to your utility expense manager, and they're all scanned in for automated uh, invoice uh, indexing. So that means they're all available on the website in one place. Often there's audits and utility algorithms that can look at your bills and say, okay, is there, is there something missing? Is there a variance? What's going on here? And then the payment piece, uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can pay one vendor your utility expense manager, and they take care of paying all the individual uh, utilities. So what does that mean for, for your time saved, for your money saved? Well, it means there's no manual data entry for your accounting team. Uh, it means you don't have to worry about calling the utility when there's an issue on your bill. Uh, we've all waited on hold. Um, we've all had the experience where we feel like we're not talking to the person that can actually get us the answer that we need. Uh, your utility expense manager typically handles all of that for you, and there's a lot of time involved in that that if you, uh, if you talk to your staff, if you are one of the staff, you're probably quite well, well aware of. Uh, we talked about uh, one payment, also no filing or scanning, so the last step after the invoice has been paid is budget season's going to come, right? Uh, questions are going to come up from management or quarterly reporting those bills need to go somewhere they can be accessed. So either you're scanning them and you're saving them on a network drive or you're filing them away manually somewhere in a filing cabinet where somebody has to go back and get them later. In this case, all of that's being done for you and it's all accessible usually on some sort of web portal where everything's in, in one place. In addition to uh, the, the time savings, there's also benefits of the reporting that bulk bill management can offer. So if your utility expense manager is collecting all this data anyway on your behalf, uh, why can't they give it to you? They typically can. And they can typically give it to you in very sophisticated ways. So in, in this case, what we're looking at is just a sample 
cost and usage trend analysis. And if, if you want to think about it in terms of you know, not only uh, functionality, so here at a glance we're able to see, okay, in the winter the consumption and the cost is going up, in the summer it's going down, very high level. Uh, if we look up toward the top we can see this is for gas. And if I know this building's heated by gas, that makes sense, no problem. Uh, if I think, you know, I want to see what that big spike is, you can dig into that uh, a little bit more. At least you know where to start, right? So in addition to, to the cost savings uh, or the reporting ability, the functionality, you also have the cost savings of if you had a question about this building and you wanted to know it as, a, as an owner or a manager, somebody's going to have to put all this data into Excel. If you're not using a utility expense manager and then graph it and plot it and, and that takes time and it takes uh, your, your team away from other projects that are probably very important. All right, so I mentioned that we would talk a little bit about bill and rate auditing. Well, these are services that can be provided independently of full bulk bill management. Uh, there, are, there are different companies and different approaches to managing your utility expenses, and uh, ultimately, you want to find what fits best for you. So for bill and rate auditing, for example, there are a number of different approaches. One approach is you go to a company and, and they may say to you, hey, we'll, we'll offer to audit your bills and if we find something, we keep 40% of the savings. If we don't find anything, you pay nothing. So there are benefits there if you think that you're doing a pretty good job and you're pretty confident that there aren't a lot of errors on your bills but you just want to feel safe, maybe that's the route to go. Uh, there are other cost structures where it's just part of a service and you pay a set fee whether uh, that company finds something or not. And uh, I will say, we, we spoke a little bit about the challenges in utility billing, the, the strict regulation, and it's not uncommon for expert bill auditors to find savings of more than $100,000 on a single account. And just to give uh, some, some flavor to that, these are actual numbers. We've anonymized some of the uh, street numbers, but you can see an idea of how many suites, what that savings per year is, yearly savings per suite. And there's, there's a bunch more of these, we just wanted to give a flavor, but the average that we found in 2014 is we can find a savings of about $170 per suite. Now that's an average, that doesn't mean that every owner that comes and says, hey, audit my bills, we're gonna find something, but typically when something is found, it can be a pretty large amount. All right, so I, I think that covers bill and rate auditing, the idea there is pretty straightforward even though uh, the things that are going to be looked at and the things that are going to possibly need to change can be fairly complex. Uh, you know, something like the Ontario Clean Energy Benefit that Vince mentioned a little earlier, although it is expiring uh, the end of this year, there are, there are different factors that influence that for multifamily housing. So for example, if, if the utility provider doesn't know that, oh, there's 200 units in this building, then you're not going to get the full credit benefit. Uh, that's something that you know someone might look at on a rate audit is, I know this building has 200 units, why doesn't it show there? Uh, the OCV credit should be larger, something like that. So from bill and rate auditing, let's move on to, to benchmarking. So in addition to some of the standard trend reporting that a uh, utility expense manager can provide you if they're managing your bulk bills, often they can also provide some sort of benchmarking. And between the two types of reporting, uh, this is what really enables owners and managers to make those strategic decisions. So we talked about the, the two options as far as the fork in the road. And I mentioned that today we're going to talk about option one, which is the measurement and the reporting and verification piece. And the reason for that is once you have those pieces in place, it's much easier to go to option two and say, okay, I want to do a, uh, a building audit. I want to invest in infrastructure. And now you know where to go. So uh, let's look at an example of what a benchmarking report might look at. And so in this case, we have, uh, again, the hypothetical three buildings. And we can see if we want to normalize on number of units and see, okay, what is the... Uh, the expense or the usage per unit. Uh, you can also do things like per square foot. Um, 
and, and you might want to weather normalize. There are different ways that you can look at the data, but generally what you're looking for is you're saying, okay, maybe we have some funds and we want to do uh, an infrastructure upgrade, and building two looks like a good place to start. It's using more than the other two. Um, building one looks like it's doing fairly well, so let's, uh, let's take a closer look at building two, and that's one way how you might approach using benchmarking. Uh, there are definitely, you know, infinite number of uses that you might be able to think of. If you go to your marketing person, they may be able to say, yeah, our, our clientele or our, resi our residents are really interested in energy efficiency and living somewhere that cares about the environment. If you're benchmarking, then you can say, hey, building one is uh, doing great. They get a great score, whatever the case may be. You might have a plaque that you put up uh, when you have potential residents come by and you can really attract clientele that way. All right, so we're going to go through just a couple others, and then we'll, uh, we'll start wrapping up and, and take time for questions. Yeah, we should have plenty of time. All right, so budgeting assistance is something if your expenses are being managed, if you have submetering, if you have a bulk bill manager, somebody else has all of your utility expense data, why, why should an owner or manager have to get that data and put the budget together? Uh, in this case, they have that data, they have uh, a lot of experience dealing with how other uh, companies in the industry might do a budget, and they may be able to say, you know what, uh, this last winter was really cold, the winter before that was really cold, maybe for your budget you should consider doing a five-year weighted, or uh, maybe you want to weatherize cooling degree days or heating degree days in this way. And so, uh, obviously the budget provided doesn't have to be the final budget, uh, owners and managers are going to want to look at it. They may make tweaks, but all of the uh, the legwork as far as somebody keying all that data into a spreadsheet or into your accounting software, uh, that can all be done for you and it can just be provided. So you can save a lot of time and a lot of costs on, on budgeting. I know budget season's coming up for a lot of owners. It's a big frustration. And that's something you might consider when you're thinking of your utility expenses is not only are you going to, if you're, if you're submetering, you're obviously going to save money. Um, if you're using bulk bill management, you'll probably find savings on your bulk bills. But there's also these, uh, these byproducts in terms of reporting, in terms of budgeting assistance that come as part of that process. So uh, procurement is another area that utility expense managers may be able to offer uh, some serious assistance. So we all, if you're an owner, manager, uh, you know that getting a good rate on your, on your contracts, your supply contracts in the areas where you can do that, is, it makes a big difference. And if you're using a utility expense manager, there are uh, relationships that they have. They have a large uh, portfolio. You know, they'll have an owner uh, here and they'll have owners across, across Canada and so they may be able to leverage that to get you a better contract. Uh, they will see a lot of these contracts uh, probably more frequently than you do. And so they are better able to spot, okay, this is something that probably doesn't need to be in the contract, or here's something that's missing, or this is a reason why uh, your rate could be lower. So those are things that they're going to help you out with, and they should be able to get you more favorable contract terms. All right, so we've gone through uh, several different tools. Um, kind of a high level, there's probably more detail we could go into for each of the tools, but I think, I think generally you probably have a flavor for what they can offer you, the savings that you can find there, and uh, what's available to you. So uh, different ways you can decide would be what are your business goals? So if you already have a, a business where you feel like you've measured uh, your expenses and your consumption fairly well. Maybe you're at the point where you want to uh, benchmark or you want to do infrastructure upgrades. If you're at a point where maybe your building that hasn't submetered yet and you see that, oh, oh my gosh, uh, expenses for utilities are gonna, they're gonna skyrocket, you know, maybe submetering is a great place to start. Uh, really the question for your business goals has to do with your specific situation and that's something that uh, you may want to talk to a utility expense manager about, and they'll ask. They'll know what questions to ask as far as where you are on uh, on utility expense management, and they can help you decide uh, what you want to do. Another question you might ask yourself is, how many vendors do you want to manage? 
obviously you can find uh, you can typically find individual companies that do any one of the things we talked about. There are companies that do only benchmarking. There are companies that do only uh, bulk bill auditing. There are companies that do only submetering. And there are um, things to be said for, for specializing to that degree. There's also things to be said for if uh, a company does all of those things, then as an owner or manager, you only have to manage that one vendor and you don't have to worry about multiple vendors. There's also a question of completeness of data. Uh, again, if you have uh, your utility expense management is spread out among multiple companies that do specific things, then somebody on your staff is typically going to have to aggregate that data and put it together when you want to decide, okay, what am I going to do with it? I need to see uh, what my residents are using, so I need my submeter data over here, but then I need to compare that to my bulk bill and see what the common area expenses are, so I need that data over here, and you have to pull it all together. Uh, if you are using a vendor that does all of those things in one place, then you should be able to just ask them, put that together for me, because you have the data. And then the last question would be cost structure, uh, depending on which tools you're going to use. Uh, there may be flexibility in how the cost structure can be arranged so that this is something that is going to be very beneficial for you. Uh, we already talked a little bit about how uh, submetering in Canada is typically free for an owner or a property manager. Uh, and oftentimes you can, you can work with uh, the, different, uh, the different tools you need and the different uh, options that are available if you have a company who can offer different tools to you and they can figure out, you know, a cost structure that works for you. All right, so just a, a very quick review and then I'll, uh, Vince and I will take any questions that you may have. And uh, if not, we'll send you to lunch a little bit early. All right, so quick review. Uh, rising utility cross, costs across Canada. I guess that's probably not something we need to review in detail. I hear it on the radio driving into work pretty much every morning. Um, but I think we, we can give a good flavor to say these are the, uh, the graphs and the different areas of the country where the changes are going to be felt the most. Additionally, action must be taken to keep expenses under control. Uh, the costs are rising at such a rate that if, if you want to do what you've always done as far as utilities, probably uh, things are going to get a lot tighter as far as your, uh, your balance sheet goes. Uh, we talked about various tools that are available, including submetering, bulk bill management, benchmarking, budgeting assistance, procurement. And then uh, we talked a little bit about how many of these tools can build on each other and open up greater advantages when used together. And uh, I just encourage each of you, whether you're uh, an owner, a property manager, a vendor, to think about utility expense management and to think about uh, rising costs and, and how you can... Uh, best navigate uh, the future in those areas. And that's everything. So thank you. Really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you.